Yeah, g'day everybody, and welcome back. There comes a point in every YouTuber's career where they need to make a tap. Not that kind of tap. Tony's done it, the small lathe guy's done it. Uh, Queen hasn't done it yet, she's made a tap follower. So when my mate Jörg started asking me questions about this weird tap size, I heard the calling. Off to the basement. He actually needs a special tap. He wants one that's a bit bigger than this. Not sure what he needs it for, but it's a weird thread. It's like 6.325 by 1.0208 millimeters. Oh wait, that's probably quarter inch by 24 TPI in bananas. That's a unified special thread. It's a bit coarser than UNF, which is what we'd use on aircraft, and it's a bit finer than UNC, which is what Americans use on all the non-aviation junk. I looked up the thread form and found some dimensions online, and then modeled the tap in FreeCAD. Next, I need some steel. So this is mystery steel. I really don't know anything about it. I'll use that as a test piece. Whereas this, this is silver steel. 1.2210 is the ISO designation. So what I'll do, this will be the real one. 16 millimeter. I'll turn this down to eight millimeter first on the bolly. That's a bit easier. And then we'll do the rest of the job on the mini lathe. And into back gear, slow speeds. That was the test piece, and now the silver steel. I'll add support with the tailstock while turning down the outer diameter. This old bolly lathe may be pretty worn out, but it still makes a beautiful surface finish. To make an accurate thread on the lathe, you need to know how far to go in with the lathe tool and when to stop. Now you might think that's easy. If you start with the lathe tool, just scratching the outside of your stock, and then you feed that tool in until this pod, well then you must have a finished thread, mustn't you? Yeah, it's not actually that easy. It doesn't tend to work that well. Why not? Well, if you exaggerate the tip of the tool, you always have some radius on the tip because extremely sharp tips are just gonna cause a stress concentration making your thread break. Fun fact, when separating a turbine hot section flange, you don't normally undo the bolts. You just over torque them and break them off. You don't reuse them anyway. It's almost impossible, at least in the home shop, to grind that radius perfectly. And then of course you've got spring back while the lathe's cutting. How do you do it accurately? You use the three wire method. If you put three wires in your thread and then measure across that distance, as long as your wire diameter is accurately known, you can then calculate your pitch diameter, which is what you really want to know. The correct wire to use for 24 TPI is about 0.8 millimeter. I think it's 29 thou in Imperial, but there's a tolerance on that. You can go out to about one. 
0.1 millimeter as well. What have I got? This is the heating resistor wire that I use for making my oven. Okay, so this wire seems to mic out at about 1.015 millimeters. So I did a super messy sketch in CAD to end up with my maximum dimension across the thread wires, just under eight millimeters. Real thread wires, being real measuring equipment, are way more accurate than this. The diameters are down in the like millionths of an inch tolerance, like sub-micron tolerances. All right. Mail time. When Paul in France sourced the tailstock for my Schaublim, he also came back to me and said one of his relatives had a Klaxon. And he had two of these Klaxon vices. Now the thing about this vice is that it's completely new. It's still got the original preservative grease on it. Now you might be wondering what such a 3X vice is actually good for. So it fits here on the tool and cutter grinder and you can use it for setting any angle. And that's what's awesome about it. It's interesting that I've never seen a Chinese copy of these. The Indians make copies and I once tried to buy one because a friend was working in India, but it was difficult with the, the communication and the postage and that and never actually happened. I don't really have any specific need for this, but hey, what's a need when it comes to a tool, huh? This kind of accessory is generally pretty rare, and especially in this condition. So when he offered it to me, well, I just had to do it, didn't I? I just had to buy it. At the very least, it's going to be awesome for making like perfect lathe tools. So once again, thanks very much, Paul. That's truly awesome. Please don't offer me any more cool stuff because I really don't have any more money. Let's use that new vise to touch up this uh, threading tool here. It's not too bad, but we can do it a bit of a touch up. So first up I'll adjust this to 30 degrees. I'll give it about seven degrees of side clearance. It's the scale. Looks about right I think. And then we have the first angle set up. Right now for the second angle, just flip that over and flop this angle over to seven degrees in the other direction. Having this universal vise with the scales is a dream. So much faster than the way I was doing it before, which was to always use the level app in my phone to set the angles, but this is much faster. All right, a couple of licks on the whetstone just to Smooth it up a little, and just a minuscule radius on the nose. Now I realize that it's a bit decadent to use a cutter grinder to grind lathe tools. I mean, it's easy enough just to offhand grind them, but I don't know, it just makes such a lovely job, huh? I kind of like it. Stock's ready, tool's ready, it's off to the mini lathe. I rarely cut things right the first time, so this is the practice piece. Right, I've made up a little program here to go through and first cut the relief and then cut the thread. So let's see how that works. Oops, I forgot to start the camera at the start of that. So this first one is just a test piece made out of the mystery steel. And it's measuring at 8.37, which is far too large. Okay, those threads are a little bit flat topped and we can see that the thread here is not completely formed. That's an error in this diameter. I cut that a little thin. I now have, I'll now repeat that with my silver steel blank. blank. I might be a little excessive on the number of passes here. Well, the thread looks pretty nice. How does it measure up? 
So the meter diameter is just a couple of hundreds under. If I did it correctly, the diameter over the thread wire should be between 7.79 and 7.62.83. So we're about four hundredths of a millimeter over. Yeah, any thread cut with this is going to be slightly oversized, slightly sloppy fit. For the next operation, which is going to be milling the dry flats, this is the setup. I don't think I've actually used this tailstock before. It's the one that goes with my rotary table. I picked up this rotary indexer somewhere along the way. It's very cool. It takes the same collets as my Bolly lathe. After cutting the first flute in three passes of a half bill D, I got a bit impatient and tried to do the second flute in one cut without any coolant. Yeah, not a good decision. Cool and help for the third flute, but I forgot to film it. Soft taps don't work, so let's harden them. Because it's so small, I'll quench it in oil from 810 degrees. But hey, while this is heating up, I'll try and engrave it. Well, this won't be winning any awards for engraving, but at least it's legible. Before it gets hardened, I'll just turn off that end. To prevent scale when heat treating, I use this disgusting colored green stuff. I don't actually know what it is. I bought it off eBay Germany oh, literally a decade ago. I assume it's borax based, but that's just an assumption. I do know that it gives off that same sort of black light glow that makes you the cool dude at any 1980s party. I'll just tick its temperature with a magnet. Once steel reaches the eutectic temperature, it loses its, mag its uh, magnetic properties. Right, gave that a quick clean up on the wire wheel. In this condition, this is hard as glass and about as brittle. I found a chart online that said taps up to and including a quarter inch diameter should be tempered at about 271 degrees. So I'll let that stabilize and then throw it in. I'll cook that for about a half hour. Later. Okay, there you have it. You can see it's been tempered back to a sort of dark straw color. You need to draw that hardness quite a bit because for a small tap like that. Right, after this poor little bug has been heated up, cooled down, heated up again, hit with the wire wheel to take off the scale and the carbon and stuff, you can see that this edge along here is the cutting edge. And those teeth are kind of rounded over. So they're gonna need sharpening again. To sharpen those flutes, it goes back in the Clarkson. <laughs> As there are three flutes, I need a way to index this around. So you use these fingers. It took a while to find the right setup. As you can see, I've mounted this finger off the table. So this cup wheel is simply too large. Luckily, with all the angle grinding I've been doing lately, I've got no shortage of nearly worn out grinding discs. Nice little thin cutoff disc, hopefully that'll work. What I really could do with is some little tiny cup wheels.
Now we're nearly finished. At this point, I've sharpened up those cutting edges and also put a little bit of positive uh, rake on there to make it cut easier, but there's no back relief. So what we need to do now is just get in here and grind back these flutes a bit so that the cutting edge hits the work first rather than all of it hitting at the same time. We'll do that on the Clarkson as well. Now there's a little bit of an angle on that tip, so I need to offset the table. I didn't set this up very well, had poor visibility, kind of just eyeballed where I was doing the grinding and ended up grinding off more than I wanted. Don't you hate that with the last operation? Well, there you have it, one homemade tap. I definitely didn't do a very nice job of uh, the spec relief, a bit excessive there. Well, there's nothing for it, let's see if this thing's going to cut. Well, it's not the easiest cutting tap I've ever used, but it does cut. Right, well, there's the thread my tap cut. You know, it doesn't even look too bad, to be honest. Pretty happy with that. I'll give that to my mate. He can try it out, and he'll tell me if it works for him or not. Hey, Jörg. I got a tap for you. I already bought one. Oh, sh <laughs> so what is this for, Jörg? Some sort of a punch, like a wad punch for cutting holes in leather. Uh huh. All oh, right. So you need to metric eight to quarter so twenty-four. Does my test nut fit? Fits like a charm. Wow. Perfect. <laughs> we'll, we'll call that luck. Thanks for watching. See you next time.